one should not want to become a leader, if you ask me. <laughs> it is just that if you have certain qualities, invariably it happens. Those who aspire to become leaders, I think they're dangerous people. It's just that because of a certain competence, a certain ability to do things, people gather around you and things happen because of you, it's wonderful. So to, in some way, to take on some leadership, you need insight and you need inspiration because when you say you're a leader, almost all the time, for some people it's most of the time, for someone like me, all the time, your life is never about yourself. So you need inspiration to keep yourself on all the time. Our lives of twenty hours a day, seven days of the week, is on, 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 all the time. If there is no inspiration, if you're not self-driven, people ask me, what drives you? I said, that's the thing, nothing drives me, I drive my life. Nothing drives me. If something drives you, it won't work because if something drives you, you're bound to be worn out after some time. So inspiration, inspiration means something that comes from, springs from within you, not something that drives you from outside. Your ability, you being inspired is very important if you have to infectiously inspire people around you. So insight, inspiration, and to be functionally effective, integrity. <coughs> if there is no integrity, you can't build trust. When there is no trust, working with people is going to be the most miserable experience. When you don't trust them or they don't trust you, that is the most horrible way to interact with people because this is going to take such a big toll on you. I was. Uh, we were conducting a program for the top 25 executives of Microsoft India. And it was a two-day event. I had about eight to nine volunteers. Our volunteers are a breed by themselves. All these years, people around me have been <laughs> feeling guilty that we don't work as hard as Sadhguru does. But these days, they're making me feel guilty, I'm not able to work as hard as them. <laughs> so they were going about doing everything without anybody managing them. They looked at them, you know, these people are always looking for attrition. They said, Sadhguru, where do you get these people? Where do you get such people? I said, you don't get them, you got to make them. They asked, how do you make them? I said, you got to make them fall in love with you. Oh, how do we do that? I said, first you have to fall in love with them. I said, oh, they don't pay us for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, leadership and well-being. Well-being is the aspiration of every human being. The question is only this, what does well-being mean to you? If well-being means just me being well, that's one thing or me and my family, that's a small leadership. Me and my community, larger leadership. Me and my country, bigger leadership. Me and the entire life on this planet, much bigger leadership. But how much we get to do is always a question of competence. Competence is a direct, directly proportional to the insight that you have. When I say insight, leadership means one way or the other, you're sitting on a perch. If you sit on a perch and don't see any better than others, you will be an object of ridicule. If you sit on a perch, you're supposed to see better than others. You are supposed to see something that nobody else can see. If you fail to see that, the same people who put you up are going to do terrible things to you. This is, you know, a lot of political leaders keep experiencing this. The same people who elected them and put them up in the office do terrible things to bring them down because in some way you are not seeing any better than them. Only if you see something more than others can see, because you're sitting on a higher perch, you have earned that position. So being up there is, 
I don't see it as a privilege or a power. It's a continuous sacrifice. <laughs> In a way, I think if you are a genuinely concerned leader, like I think Lee Kuan Yew, you know, mm -hmm. the maker of Singapore, he said, what we got here is a successful Singapore. What we lost here is my life. <laughs> because uh, there was nothing there to call as my life because, you know, people are always talking about work-life balance. I don't know what that is because it's just, there is no difference. Your work is your life and life is your work. This does not mean there are no beautiful dimensions to your life. In fact, there are far more beautiful dimensions to your life than a protected kind of well-being that people have in the name of personal relationships, this and that. I think, I mean, I hold intimate relationships with thousands of people around me. I mean, it's like if I lived with them for 30, 40 years, how it would be. That kind of relationships I hold within a matter of three to four days, they are with me and they also manage that with me. This comes not because of some great mystical dimension. This doesn't come because of something else. This just comes because of involvement. And without involvement, there is no life. Without involvement, it doesn't matter what you have in your life, you will not know well-being. If you want to enjoy well-being, you need absolute involvement. Wherever you are right now, you need absolute, absolute involvement to know a sense of joy and well-being in everything that you do. Where there is no involvement, if you do anything without absolute involvement, that's torture. See, I want you to just look at it this way. If you are forced to do something that you don't really want to do, isn't that help? Yes. When you're doing what you really want to do, isn't that heaven in every way? So where there is absolute involvement, there there is joy, there there is life, there there is exuberance of 